Hey, hey, what's up, guys? Iggy here, Faltec Unlimited, the holster guy. We are doing a Canic TP9 SFX. Yeah, you saw that right. That is the 5 inch uh, Canic. Uh, they actually come with uh, 20 round magazines, two of them, uh, extended mag release, and this thing has a bunch of goodies. So, this is a brand new mold. Uh, I had to replace it because um, yeah, my father accidentally broke it, but it's all good. Um, so, it's a brand new mold, so I just washed it with some brake cleaner. And then you wipe it down with some uh, alcohol. That way, uh, the tape will actually stick to it. Because before, the tape wouldn't stick. So there we go. So we will take this off. And uh, this is actually going to be an RTI holster. It's not going to go on a G-code uh, yet, but it's uh, just going to be an RTI with a rubber thumb blade break. So I'm going to show you how I do these rubber thumb brakes uh, on this particular pistol with the, uh, the RTI. So I'm looking forward to this. I, I personally have one of these. And uh, these things are absolutely phenomenal. So let's get it going. Rail on there. We'll go with this side because there's not going to be much on this side other than the some blocking. But this is going to be epic. Things a mile long. There's four. And there's five. All right. Do the other side. If you notice, I have this as black. That is the um, release, and I have shaved it down so I could do blocking uh, that much easier. To start this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually throw this piece down here so it will be uh, easier to block. Now, this there's going to be blocking for this right here, but there still needs to be a channel for this. So this is going to be uh, some fun. And if you want to, you could always just do that. All right, so this side, we are not going to know where this goes just yet, so we are not going to worry about this this side, the right side of the firearm. We're going to do the left side. Now, this is going to have an RTI 34 plate on it. So I'm go ahead and get that plate out. And we know we want the plate right around here. So this is going to be probably right around, let's see the top of it is there, yeah, this seems about in the middle. So we're going to have to build up all that right there, so that's just two pieces, so no big deal. Yep. Alright, so let's go ahead, anchor that down where we want it. And then, like I said, you're going to have to build up something here. So take some dowels, like coming to America, Mr. McDowell. All right. Figure out where you need it. And cut. We're going to need two of these ones with this particular plate. I probably would have went with a 33 on this one because uh, there's no light. And here we are to check. A little tall, and I when I mean a little, I mean just slightly. So I'm gonna hit him with the same. All right. Oh, these. Oh, that's perfect. All right. So one's gonna go there, and one's gonna go right there, and oh, I love it. All right. Let's get the thick boy right there. Push those in again. Yeah, where you going? Nowhere. Props if you know uh, what movies that's coming from. <laughs> I know it. Do you? Where you going? Nowhere. You should. It's a gun movie. All right. Cool. I am happy with that. That is going to be absolutely pissa. All right. So what I want to do... Sadly, you're going to have to assemble the uh, the button real quick, just so we know. It's it's much easier if you do this. So, 
take the button out that you need, which is going to be that guy, that guy, and that guy. The reason I know this is, well, because I do this a lot. But no, in all seriousness, well, this is the only one that is looks like that. You have the button itself, and if you have a regular bolt in there instead of the shouldered one, then it sticks out and you won't be able to do anything. So, let's grab this. It doesn't matter what side you do because, well, it's going to be hidden. Because I make these so they are hidden, you don't see them, you don't know what's going on. All you see is two screws holding it, so that's the way I like to do it. That's the way I've always done it. And you'll see exactly why at the end of this video. So I'll get that in there. So if you notice, it's much easier instead of taking the uh, the slotted post and pushing it through the rubber, screw the uh, screw through it, and then put the uh, threaded post on there. And it'll it'll go on. All right. So that's what we want right there. Okay. Now when we do this. Okay, so we know this is going to go here, but remember we have to do blocking right here. So we need. Um, let's see here. It's going to have to be not super thick. Pretty much that should be good. there and that will cover the, the uh, slide catch you don't have to worry about that but what you now need to do is you need to put something right here because this is going to sit right here so something right here is going to go so you, ideally you want something just as wide and just as tall and if I can find exactly what I'm looking for, right here, okay, it'll be golden. So this is going to go right here. It's the same height. And if we have screw right here and right there, it is not going to be a problem. You could also take it and we could do multiple so the end user can do it. I like to have the button once it's folded. right where you can flick it. So the button itself is going to go right here and this is going to go here. So we'll take this and throw this right there. Alright, now this side is done. done. And now we're going to move to this side. So get marker out. Figure out where you're going to want it. And we know it's going to go right there. And I'm just going to do this so I know. Okay. Uh, so, I'd say put down a piece of blocking so it's easier. Oh, actually. With this, we won't have to do that. We just go one thick guy, and we'll show you why. Put this back on. Still not sticking that well, but we're good. All right. So once we're at this point, we know this is going here. This is what we're going to do. We are going to do do do. That and I am looking for a particular piece. What you need to do is find something that's wider than your uh, yeah your strap. And this is what we're going to do. So, we're going to take this, and we're going to place this right in the middle. And you could do however design you want, you know, whatever, think, 
would look good. I think that would look good. So take this. Make sure there's some on the back of the firearm because you, you definitely you want that. Okay. So take it. Once you get the spot you like, lock that in place. All right, and then take another piece and just go on top of it where those bolts were gonna go. And you will see why later on. So throw that there, throw that there. And they could literally be any design you choose. Uh, you can have it flipped, that way the whole thing sticks out, but this will work just as well. Alright, so that is all set. I'm going to actually do one piece over this way as well. Let's create an X. Everything looks good. I think I'm going to add something right here too, real quick, just for this guy, just to get it up out of the way, because we're going to want this in the same position. All I got to do is cut the retention block and throw it in. Let's cut this guy now. You know how we do this. Line it up with your sight channel. Trace the outline as best you can. Label it. And then cut it. We're going to cut this on the scroll. It's cut. Matches up good. Tape that sucker on. stick to this either. I'm gonna have to wash this guy again. Biggie. Alright. Then heat up the decks. 350 degrees. And throw it in your press. We'll do that. Be right back. Lord, this one worked. Alright, this one I had to press again because uh, everything shifted and that's not good. So I had to redo some of it. Remove some of it, switch a couple things around, um, but in the end, this one works. So let's uh, get this guy going. One of the things I did was this was sitting this way. I flipped it, and I'll be showing you why I flipped it later on uh, with how I do this job in particular. And you'd be like, oh, oh, oh yeah, okay, that makes sense. So it would be. Much easier and look better if I did it this way. So I did that. And then I realized on the other side, I didn't need that third piece right here. This is plenty. So I went ahead and removed that. So I need to learn. I need to remove everything as it comes out and put it all back. That's how my bench gets all crud covered. All right. Let's drill a hole in this. I drill a hole in these, and I pop a uh, an 8x10 rivet in it, and then I hang it up with the gun so I'm not searching for these. So, 
I've been adding rivets as I go, which is nice. Uh, so anyways, this, let's, um, let's do some stuff. This one is going to take a little bit of finessing. I've done one other video on how to do this, but it takes some practice. Now all the holes you drill on this are going to be, uh, I think, 7.30 seconds. Yeah, 7.30 seconds, so you don't have to worry about changing bits or anything. Alright, so that's done, that's done. White pencil, better one. Okay, this is going to be a flush cut. And we'll have... So, this is going to come up halfway, and then it's going to go this way. We'll cut through that, but we got to make sure we definitely go where we can't cut through that. So, we'll go around that. I know we cannot cut through that. All right. So, we'll go there. Probably go straight. That might be better. All right. We'll see in the end. Yeah, it's not going to matter on this side as long as we stay, like, over here. And then this is an RMR cut. So it's going to be right on the edge of that. And I believe the RMR goes to there. Yeah, RMR stops right here. So we'll follow that body line like that. So let's drill these. And before we do any of this, we're going to cut it and shape it because we want it like that before we drill the mounting holes for this guy. So we'll be right back with that. Cut, cleaned, sanded, and everything's done but these holes. So what we're going to do now is take our mold, throw it in there. And you see this is uh, how we did it. And the RMR comes down so low, but uh, anyways... So this would uh, this is gonna work. So we are going to figure out where on here. Get your pencil. Where in here this is going to go, which we know it's gonna go pretty much right there. Take this off. I'm gonna put a hole there. Hole there. And what I'll do is I'll even do a hole there. It's too far. All right, so we'll do three so the end user can uh, take it and he can put it wherever his heart desires. One, two, three. Okay, clean your holes. Take your deburring tool, get in there, again this is a Noga, N-O-G-A, it's part number RN2000, I believe, the thing works, the balls, alright, quick okay so we know we are putting it on this one so it helped because you could put it on there and then snap that back right on right on that itself so let's grab the hardware put it on the front too these are supplied quarter inch pass-throughs with eighth inch and throw these puppies in Up, 
tighten it down. All right, now the reason why we have it bumped up is so, and then we leave this right here. The reason is because if we don't, and we cut this part off, when the gun goes in, it will slide against all the hardware and then scratch the crap out of your gun or your customer's gun. So uh, yeah, that's what you want to do there. That fits good. I'll go back and um, let's see here. All right, and then let's get this. This needs to go on better. Where's the gun? Here it is. Sometimes the rubber just stinks. As in, it doesn't want to cooperate. Okay, and that's because that is too large. So we're going to swap this out with a smaller one. So on this, we're going to go eighth inch. everything you need put it through it there we go Take a little bit of your Loctite there you go that's what you want we're gonna back it off a of hair so it's flush there we go Let's flush the back. Take this. Throw it in place. Wrap it around. Give it a little bit of slack. And mark the holes. We're only going to mark two of them. Perfect right there because if we do a third, it's going to be too close. So we'll mark those. I think that should, yeah, that should be perfect right where it is. All right. So we'll take those two and drill those two. Clean those. spray inside this right now before I put the hardware in. Clean it up. Okay. And uh, I'm going to show you what I do now because we're going to take this point right here and we're going to cut that open. So grab your holster, grab this, and grab your Dremel. But I'm going to do it over here so you can see it. And we're going to be using the router bit on the Dremel. This router bit is slightly larger than this. And if you notice, this piece is also slightly larger. So we're going to go ahead and cut this out right here. And a steady hand is very much wanted. You can see that. Yep. So I punch it through and then I work up and down. Don't cut too much material off. 
you're going to want to check. All right, so we need a little bit more. So it's just enough on both sides. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go clean that up with one of the other Dremels. There we go, and all I did was flatten the edge. And now I will take my knife and just clean out a little bit of the crap. As long as it's presentable on the top. Okay, make sure this is facing how it should. Okay, now this is where it's going to get kind of tricky. Um, let's see here. Pretty sure these should be fine. So what you're going to do, because we know this is this way, so we'll go that way. We're going to slide this guy in. And we know it was these two, so 1.5 and 1.75. So the two middle. Okay, right, so get those out. And then get these guys are going to go in that way. Maybe easier to just do this for you. So one, two. There we go. Get your screw. Get that through the rubber. Get your pass through in there, and that should bring it right through. Yep, put that screw. Yeah, All right. So we know that works. So I'm gonna undo. that set screw put it back in take the next one put the next one in now what you can do is you can actually cut the rest of it off but it shouldn't affect anything so take your thread locker a little bit on there all right and then take your posts which I'm gonna get shorter ones. I feel like that'd be better. These are eighth inch posts. Throw that on there. Nothing about posts, slotted posts, some of them stink. All right, one's in. Second one in. There we go. And there it is right there. Check the C. doesn't hit but those screws didn't seat all the way so we need to get some smaller screws here we are with the 
the smaller ones. So yeah, some of this stuff is trial and error. So you just gotta figure out what's gonna work best in your application. I know those are very close together, so let me see if I can find ah, this right here. It's a cut one. That cut one should, yeah, do exactly what I want by saving space and not overlapping. place the thumb boom all right so next we'll go ahead with the RTI plate I'll grab the hardware all right so this is a half inch and this is a half inch and again half inch these which all these are half inch as well mark them because those puppies ain't coming out again put them in get them started And then just check spacing on your wheel. Make sure there's plenty of room right there, which there is. Uh, wipe your crap off there. And do your retention. Quarter inch slotted posts, three eighths of an inch, and then 0.4375. down too much Keep going a little bit more love it right there and then bam so there is a RTI wheel rubber thumb brake Canic TP9 SFX.